Here's another problem. Here's our axes. The x component is negative 3. The y component is negative 6. Let's figure out the overall vector. We would start by writing down our axes. Now we have to write down the components and use them to draw the overall vector. We can start by drawing the x component or the y component, whichever you like. Uh, I guess I'll start with the x component. Now, uh, the x component, notice, should be anti-parallel to this positive x-axis. So let's be careful about what direction that x component is pointing in. Looks like it's pointing like this. You can see this is the negative x direction. Up and to the left is the negative x direction, since down and to the right is the positive x direction. Always we have to be careful about directions and signs. Now where the x component left off, we should put in the y component. Now the y component is also pointing in a negative direction. So uh, over here, the y axis here is pointing down and to the left in the positive direction, so the negative direction would be up and to the right. And the key thing is to draw this perpendicular to the x component. I'm probably not really drawing this to scale, but I am going to draw that the y component is longer than the x component. The key is that these are really only components if they're perpendicular, and now we should draw the overall vector. Well, this is the initial point, so to speak, because this is where the x component began, and this is the final point, because this is where the y component ended. So here's the overall vector. The overall vector did not come out to be uh, vertical, but why should it? Uh, there's no reason why the overall vector should come out to be exactly vertical here. Uh, in fact, it's not going to come out to be overall vertical, because of course the x and the y components are not exactly balancing each other. So this is not a 90 degree angle, this is a 90 degree angle. The angle between the components is the 90 degree angle. The angle between the components has to be 90 degrees. Here's the magnitude we want to know, and we'd also like to know the angle here at the tail of the overall vector. That'll give us its direction. Here's the information we were originally given. The overall vector is the hypotenuse. I'll put an asterisk to help me label the adjacent and opposite sides. Since we were given two sides, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. Uh, the hypotenuse is what we don't know, the magnitude of the overall vector. One leg was 6 and the other leg was 3. We're not plugging in signs here because these are just lengths. So we need 6 squared plus 3 squared, which is 45. To get rid of the squaring, we take the square root of both sides. And the square root of 45 is 6.7. So the overall vector has a magnitude of 6.7. Overall vector with a magnitude of 6.7. Now we have to find theta. tangent because um, we were given the opposite and adjacent sides. The opposite side has a length of 6 and the adjacent side has a length of 3. Remember not to plug in signs when you are dealing with trig functions that can sometimes lead you to a wrong answer. We'll probably go ahead and say that 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now we have to take the inverse tangent of both sides to get rid of the tangent function. The inverse tangent of 2 is 63, approximately. So we can say this is a 63 degree angle. 
So the overall vector has a magnitude of 6.7, and its direction is indicated by this angle of 63 degrees. If you wanted to, you could have drawn the y component first and then the x component. If you draw the y component first, and then the x component, you get this right triangle, and then you end up figuring out this angle. Well, it's pretty clear that if you worked it out this way, the angle you would have gotten was 27. So if you got an angle of 27, that's fine, as long as this was the angle that you were focusing on. 